Hi, I've got here some calcium carbide with the chemical formula CHC2. Now if I take some of that and drop it into water, you can see that it reacts rather vigorously while forming a gas. Now if we light that gas on fire, you can see that it burns with a very bright and very beautiful flame. The gas we are forming right here is known as acetylene or ethene and has the formula C2H2. That means the calcium atom is getting replaced by two hydrogen atoms and at the same time we are forming some calcium hydroxide down here by the formula shown on screen. And this flame will keep on burning for quite a while, that's why it was used earlier to make lamps. Actually, at a certain point, this method was used to make bicycle lamps. That's kind of hard to imagine today. And the entire room is now getting filled with black soot, which is not ideal. So I should probably move that outside. Now in this video, I want to make some fun experiments with that gas, like freezing it to make a flammable form of dry ice. And I also want to compare it to another gas with a very similar formula which is called ethylene, but it has actually very different properties and we're going to compare these two today. Now with a white background you can see very nicely how much horrible soot this is producing. So this isn't exactly an environmentally friendly way to make light. Also if you look very closely you can see that the flame is so hot that it was able to melt through the glass. Now in order to freeze it we're going to start by filling a balloon with it. So I've got here roughly 3.3 gram heavy piece of carbide and I'm going to put it in the balloon which I'll then put over top of this Erlenmeyer and then I'll let the carbide drop into the water Thinking about it, that might not be the best idea, because then it get, it'll get mixed with some oxygen, which is not ideal, but oh well, no risk, no fun. That's a rather pathetic balloon. So let's add another piece with about the same weight. That balloon is an okay size now. Let's get some liquid air ready. Whoops. And now let's try to freeze our acetylene. Let's see how much that weighs now. Now the much more interesting question is, can I get some out? Oh, I don't think so. Okay, I need to think of a more clever way of doing that. Okay, never mind, I, d I actually did get some out on the first attempt. Let's light it on fire. It's amazing. Okay, first try. Now let's go a lot bigger. Now I've got here 2 liter Coke bottle filled with water and 20 grams of calcium carbide, so let's go. release the first little bit to make sure we don't create a giant oxygen explosion. So now we'll try to put it on top of this test tube. And now I can conveniently freeze it down here in the test tube. You can see it is boiling 
because the gas is freezing. And apparently the test tube is full now at the lower end. Okay, apparently that's as much acetylene as I can fit in a test tube. So here you can see very nicely the solid acetylene. And that's as steep as I can go. Now let me try to get it out, but first I'll secure the balloon. Oh, it's apparently only a very thin layer. It's exactly what I was afraid of. Let it warm up slowly. You can see it boiling right there. Oh, oh I've got it out, some at least. A tiny amount. Yeah, so here we have some more acetylene dry ice. You can see it pretty much behaves exactly like dry ice. It evaporates, leaving no liquid. Now let's light that on fire too. Oops. Can you touch? Yeah. If you touch it, it has a good average temperature. Ooh, ow, ouch. But you can't let the flame touch you. <laughs> Great, and now they're soot everywhere again. Let's now set the rest of the balloon on fire. Whoops, that was quite a fireball. I now want to make some ethylene, which is very similar in the formula, but quite different in its properties. And these two gases are quite often confused. The acetylene or ethene we just made has the formula C C2H2. And what I'm now going to try to make is ethylene with the formula C2H4. Ethene has a triple carbon-carbon bond and ethylene has a carbon-carbon double bond. Now there are no rocks that we can just toss into water that will make us some ethylene. So to make it it's a little bit or actually quite a bit more difficult and we're going to make it by decomposing some ethanol which I'm going to take from rubbing alcohol into water and ethylene gas. And for that we're going to need some concentrated sulfuric acid which I'm pouring into this flask right now. Now we'll set this up for distillation. Now let's fill in some rubbing alcohol, which is mostly ethanol, into the addition funnel. Okay, now let's turn up the heat and the stirring. I've now set up a bubbler here at the end so we can see when gas is generated. So let's try to drip in some ethanol. Okay, apparently that's as good as it's going to get. But it looks like it might be working. Look at that. Now we are certainly farming ethylene. The next step is now to fill a balloon. Great, the side product is sulfur dioxide. I don't think either sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid are suitable catalysts for making ethylene. But at least I've proven the point very well that it's very difficult, or a lot more difficult to make ethylene than acetylene. I'll have to leave it at that, but at least I've achieved the main goal and made some flammable dry ice, so that's something. For fun, let's just drop in all the ethanol at the end and see what happens. Well, that also didn't really produce a significant amount more, and nothing really exciting happened. And let's also set the balloon on fire. Whoa, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that scared me. <gasps> Please don't cause a giant fire. <laughs> if you want to see more content like that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss it. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and a comment. And thanks a lot for watching.